Okay, everybody, we are back for round five of the fifth DCS of DCS5. Um, we've got the Witness versus Kinch1997 here. Um, what do you think they're playing? Pop quiz. I have no idea. Just guessing from the sleeves. I am going to not look up the deck list because that would be horrible. No, that's... Um, I have no idea. That would, that would be, be cheating. That Let's... would be cheating. Let's have a look. Maybe we'll, we'll witness some greatness, but uh, maybe we've got Burning Abyss versus Dark Magician, which would, which would be an insane matchup for Table 7. Yeah, this is Table 7 here. Um, that, that would be an insane matchup. Um, yeah, this so, is okay, maybe PK. PK, you know, Striker maybe? It's striker could be a good shout. Yeah. You know, I'm so, I'm so shocked that Striker's like... The striker's back. Oh no, it's, Kagemush, so it's definitely. PK. We've seen a lot of PK today, um, as well. What was it on the uh what was it on the the thing here? I wanna just take a look real quick on the breakdown. How many PK were there? Definitely uh, there. Seven percent. So only eight players brought PK. We've eight, seen eight. a lot of it though today, the top tables. Yeah. I think, you know, I think people have underestimated it. Um so I think it's something just as silly as I tweeted last night. Love PK um, and Don Juan uh, replied, Protoss call dark. And I think a lot of people have had that mentality. So they've, they've underestimated it potentially and uh -huh. not been looking forward to actually playing it. Uh huh. Well, let's see what happened this starting turn here. We had, I think, uh, Torn Scales and Kagemucha, and then Torn Scales went discard Jackalope to dump the Ancient Cloak. And then the jackalope yes. summoned out the, the 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 snake, and then we've got cherubini. Um, so it's a pretty good setup for a potent. Oh, oh, sorry, it's clinch that's saying on res or asking if there's anything on res. So this kind of telegraphs to me. I think he might be going for an Appaloosa play, and he might have that dark extender and torn scales. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. And but yeah, does, looks like does. that's how it's going. So we'll get our cherubini back. Okay, okay. Very safe. Very safe play. I like it. I like it. Um, you know, as long as he can get to... Yeah, he's going to get to Rusty here, no problem here, with the, torn, the cloak uh, adding him mm -hmm. probably uh, boots, I would imagine. Yep. Yeah. So we'll bring out the torn scale and then just use that as a conduit to summon out boots onto the board. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, makes sense. This will probably go for a... Oh, he's gonna, oh, Levier. Levier makes a lot of sense here. That saves a bunch of follow-up. Oh, no, not Levier. Okay, he's just going to use those two. Okay, it makes sense for the Rusty. Might still be a Levier. There Could might still potentially... be a Levier in the future, yep. Mm -hmm. um, at the very least, you know, again, we're, we're going to end on, like, double fog blades, potential DPE. Mm -hmm. Ragged Gloves is big, absolutely. So if he can get any other level three on board, then he's got, he's in a really good standing. Yeah, and he could banish this to maybe send send one of the reborn traps. Yeah, wings. Yeah, wings. Exactly, wings mm -hmm. reborn, then go into the the levier, then into verte. Have all the follow up in the world plus an extra fog blade. Yeah, this is really standard, but I like it. You know, safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's going oh. for the break sword play. Um, I'm personally a big fan of this. I wonder if he's on like the. The rank up package. I don't think he could access it, so maybe just using it as follow up. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we'll see how it goes. Right. So yeah, the advantage of Levier there, he's he gets one of his cloak or his gloves back for follow up. In this one, he gets a rank. He's just gonna link them off again. So he just wants some a little bit of extra follow up. Okay. So this is interesting. Do you think that Levier would have been? Like, Levier just gets you one extra thing. What does Breaksword get you? Is it like the so follow-up? What, what this will do is, if we use the set Fog Blade and it gets sent to the graveyard with one of our opponent's cards, it means that we can bring back the Breaksword during our opponent's turn to a Rusty Points to for an additional pop. It can then be linked off into something like Nightmare Unicorn. So this board actually could end on maybe five, six pieces of interruption if it goes right. If it goes right, being the key see. phrase here. I see, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so right, if you get the fog blade, that that helps with the rusty. Okay, so no, we're not even going to ah. see what the witness is playing. That makes sense. Yeah, 
And to be honest, actually, I'd entirely miss DPE, so Fogblade could do the negate, and then it could just be popped by DPE. Mm, right, and then you could use that to... Yeah, so that's really, really... Okay, yeah. I see, I see. So that was a really strong board. Um, we don't know what the witness is playing, so it's smart, because that way he has a signing advantage, right? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, Kinch just doesn't know what he's playing. You, you can basically... You can, like, you can take a risk. Like, okay, I'm just going to just mm -hmm. hope... Like that he's playing a certain deck, or you could just put like generic going second cards that like are always like okay, like Lightning Storm or Pangratops. Yeah. Put in some hand traps, maybe. Let's so see. I'm not gonna tell you what the witness is playing. I did look it up. Okay, okay. Well, I'll. You, you are not guess. gonna see it coming. I'm not gonna see it coming. I was gonna guess Sword Soul because that's the most you, popular deck. So that's the best guess. But I actually don't. You're know. not gonna see it coming. We're not gonna see it coming. I, Ooh, this is exciting. This is beautiful. I am um, chat. I want you spam the chat. What do you think that the witness is on? But I guarantee no one, no one's going to get it right. This no is no one is going to guess. Wow. Okay. But okay. please spam the chat. You know it's good for the algorithm. It's good for the channel. And this is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I bet Ooh. though. I bet though a lot of people have us on in the background. You know, that are playing in the tournament. You know, and... mm Hmm. Uh, yeah, I've always wondered that, like, um, you know, do like, is that something that people do? That you know, if like Farf is streaming an event, are they just gonna have him in the background just in case they manage to go up against one of the people he features? Yeah, yeah. Oh, ABC. Yup, ABC. We had Cloudians and Numeron guest in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> ABC. Uh, we had Moki Moki beatdown. As a guess as well but that's that's abc one guess. i'm you know i didn't even choose this feature match because of abc i just saw like okay yeah we, we were literally talking we just goes yeah table seven table seven and there we go okay so okay he grabs asl core so this is like full combo it's like yeah. full combo he's got all the stuff here um the, you know there was i think there was a point in time probably when i was like a less experienced player that i would look at abc and just go, I've auto lost. But man, I'm so I'm so happy to see that over the years it's just turned into like one of these really cool rogue decks that can do probably a lot with the right hand. You know, Union Driver is one heck of a card in mm -hmm. combination with Union Hanger. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really I really miss Union Carrier. I think it was like balanced in this deck. You know, it wasn't doing stupid buster or her sending Drytrons to grave or what like Dust Knight to grave. Um Yeah. I wish they made it so that it only equipped, like, machines from deck. Yeah, because, you know, it's very clear, um, you know, Union Carrier itself is literally just made up of those boxes on Union Hangar. So, like, it was meant for this deck, and I just, I'm baffled as to why, you know, they made it as generic as it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay, we got Chainlink 1C, Chainlink 2B. Now, we know that um, Kinch has another ABC piece in his hand. You could only do this, by the way, if you have an ABC piece in your hand. To activate C and then B, um, but we and know he a, has it's one. It's a difficult thing um, to verify with it with the new rules. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he summons A here. Honestly, Nib is not going to do that much against this deck. I yeah, mean, he's looking for an Appaloosa here. I would guess. Um, uh, yeah, I think. Um, We've, we've hit the critical mass where, like, at Nib right now stops the Appaloosa, which, you know, people don't like to be negated, so I get that. But really, you know, ABC Buster's still in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so A is going to add back. Does he have a piece he can add back? Yeah, he's got a C that he can add back, yeah, which is nice. Feet. And, you know, I think if there's any possibility of amending on a rank 4, um, I'm certain this deck plays... Um, what's the word? Abyss Dweller, which would really just shut the game down. Mm -hmm. The question is, does he use the ABC effect on his turn right now? He go to end phase, use ABC. Yeah, he's going to do this. He's going to probably pitch the C back. Yeah, he pitches the C. Yeah, C banished nib. That way, that that ABC that's banished. Um, okay, so he's got a he's got a banish, which is a good form of removal against, especially against PK. Yeah, because you know, like Cherubini can protect itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll have to see here. Main one is all good. Uh, now he's gonna go battle face evenly. <laughs> that would be oh. that would hurt. Um, <laughs> that would be terrifying. That would hurt a lot. Uh, 
so I think um, that there is that. There yeah. Honestly, ABC is a really scary card against the kind of counterplay that PK has right now because it can get rid of the Cherubini before it sends anything important. If they try and go for like Break Sword into Zeus, again it just banishes the Break Sword. Plus, we've got two set cards, um, and I'm not entirely sure what those could be. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit mist like I always just assume imprint, but we could also see um the unauthorized reactivation card, the one that can equip. Um, and that can provide extra protection. That's a good show. I actually didn't think of that. Yeah, so here we go. If he has the unlicensed authorization, he could equip you oh no, he's just gonna chain. Okay, so no no unauthorized here. Because that would be a good chance to I think put A. The A. Uh no. Monster effects. No, so oh, C. C oh, is the there. one. Stops traps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So I wonder where the play goes from here. Um because realistically, they they burned the mascarina quite early. I wonder if there's another link too they could have used to be able to like just to avoid using that. Um because I feel like mascarina with this sort of like ABC strategy is just insane. Yeah, it, it is, except the problem is I think that um, he, he also used Prosperity, so he might be running short on Link 2s. You are um, right, yeah. This is going to be interesting. It really depends on what these back rows are. Um, it's mm -hmm. going to be huge what these back rows are, because they weren't unauthorized. Um, yeah, cause, uh, like, yeah it's going to have to be big disruption. Um, of course, we are in the side deck, and yeah, I, f I think ABC player's definitely in a more disadvantageous position, because once you start to let this deck go, if you get Cherubini, you've got a ton of setup already. Mm -hmm. Especially when you normal summon Tour Guide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he wasn't able to, like, for example, he had the Kinch, hat, or, or Clinch, sorry, I'm missing that L, little reading, reading issue, surprise from you, but call by the grave on the grab, oh, now what do you think about this? Because this is... I think with more extenders... It doesn't hurt as much, um, but I think denying access to that Graph Seer Cherubini loop is big, because, you know, that's one of the biggest forms of advantage the deck has. Mm -hmm. But Cherubini can send just about anything here. Um, some PK decks are still on... Okay, so he's going for Boots. Um, I was going to say some of them are on Edge Imp Sabres as a Dark Level 3, but that's not the case here. Yeah, because what he really needs is, like, one extender, basically, because that will get him into Rusty, basically, right? Yeah. So I think Boots can search Brigandine here, which is just going to go straight into Rusty. I see. I see. Yeah. Now, I think if this last set is just a well-held imperm, you know, he's, he's going to get really rewarded for it, um, because I doubt that PK have more extenders accessible at the moment. Mm -hmm. So if he manages to hold it for the, the Rusty, then we've still got a game in our hands. He's going for the Fog Blade. Blade. Now, do you think he might, might have sided it out? Uh, potentially. Um, I don't know if it's... Oh, well, no, ignore me. He's got the Fusion Destiny. Yeah, but this is not... I'm not as worried about this. These, these pieces float like there's no tomorrow. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And... And so I'm not, like, I feel like if I'm the witness, I'm not unhappy to see this be the sort of the resolution of this turn. Um, yeah. Because, like, the, the ABCs are just floating monsters. Like, they just float, every, everything floats. Float, 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 everything just floats. Um, yeah. Again, wondering what this set card is, but if it, again, if it is an Imperm, it's, it's going to do some damage because, you know, um, DPE not being able to pop everything is big. We're going to get an A in the graveyard. What does A grab again? It grabs from the graveyard, so we've got that C, C follow-up. Yeah. And, you know, really all that's going to happen is if they clear this board, there's just an A, B, C in the graveyard ready yeah. to go. Yeah. And if, you know, he's going to probably try to, like, main phase or end phase use the DP to pop the back row. So I think even if it's an imperm, it's probably not going to be that effective since it won't be used on the next turn. But if you leave the monsters, it's still bad because they just link. <laughs> so, like, you don't yeah. really have a choice here. That is, yeah. This is actually, for a while, I was thinking, that, you know, the witness is probably going to take a, a hard L, but this is, this is going to turn into a real game here. Yeah, it was A in Nightmare Unicorn that was tributed for the nib. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... It's a strong token. 
as well. Um, so yeah, if you want to just yeah. get, like just turn it to attack and start bashing at the DP next turn. Yeah, Cherubini will have... How much more will Cherubini have? It has enough. Excuse me? It has enough, because yeah. the thing only oh, has yeah. 200 defense anyway, because A only has 200 defense. Here comes Phoenix Enforcer, probably going to pop the back row. I would imagine. I mean, it's still looking good. Depending on what's left in the Witness's extra deck, I mean, he's got just massive amounts of advantage next turn. Once this, like, it's mm -hmm. ABC was, like, the original, like, okay, well, I float, 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 summon a big boss, float, 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 summon a boss, like, it was, like, the original just summon three things back, all float, summon three more things. Yeah. And, you know, we can't discount the fact as well that this deck can also play Phoenix Enforcer, so we can end on a couple of pieces of, like, banishing or popping, um, and all of these things, as you said, just float forever. Oh, it was an imperm. Good call there. Um, he's got to pop his own DP, though. Um, oh, oh, Cherubini protects it. I think he might have negated it. it. Oh, Cherubini yeah. protects it. Ah, very cool. Oh, Cherubini does, yeah. Oh, that's a good place, right. So the free back row's a little bit scarier. Yeah, there's a, at least one fog blade, probably a couple more. Um, mm -hmm. But he's got three pieces. Even... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like once you've got the three pieces, you know, these can... As you said, link off, float, special summon, and just spam the board a lot, all while setting up ABC. So no matter what he really does, if he doesn't save his interaction for the ABC, I feel like he's, he's going to get overwhelmed a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, Fogblade will never really stop the, the uh, ABC Dragon Buster. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm interested to see what he's going to... Oh, he's not even going to do anything with Cerberus, because I was going to say, um, Cherubini protects itself, and... I believe it can, yeah, it can also protect DPE. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's already protecting DP, which is why DP didn't get destroyed by its own effect last turn. Um, mm -hmm. We do have all the pieces in Grave already, so that's really nice. We've got a wee bit more spamming. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's, got he's linking up world DPE. Goddess. Beautiful. This is great. Oh, this is some my really interesting. God, game. Underworld Goddess is huge here. Oh, I love now, that. It is funny because PK is kind of a matchup suited against Underworld Goddess because everything targets, but like that's a big hit. You know, he's he's really gonna have to be top decking some good stuff and grabbing stuff off a Celestial. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now he does have the Celestial Dasher thing, yeah. But okay. Mm -hmm. Eden Hanger is just gonna go crazy on the advantage. Um He wants to pressure for like lethal, I would imagine here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, he can banish the Fog Blades with the, with the Buster Dragon. And really interesting, um, Goddess has, a, has a, a monster reborn negation. So even in the event where they try and bring something back from the graveyard, like a PK, or even if they get into the, Cherubi, uh, the Burning Abyss engine a bit again, that, that it's not going to do anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, he's trying to make this ABC Dragon Buster unaffected by traps and spells. He's going to try to use the C to attach to the ABC Dragon Buster, which I like, because now the Fog Blade can't hit it anymore. <laughs> the Fog Blade is probably going to hit... Off. Yeah, he's going to try to hit Underworld, but he might l have to use two Fog Blades on his Underworld. Because, you know, <laughs> Buster will banish one of them. Um, and... Yeah, this is really interesting. This is this is really cool. This is really like ABC is a really nifty deck, um, mm -hmm. and I think it's what we're in a format that's low enough power level for the most part, where decks like these, like ABC, um, or like Dragon Link or PK, that just really need to survive your opponent's turn until turn three can just go insane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the follow up. Now, the underworld was really sick because I was trying to think of links that would like do well against DP and I couldn't think of one. Um, but mm -hmm. underworld makes a lot of sense because that floating power is just crazy. And the best way to it's like one of the best ways to utilize all that floating power. Um, mm -hmm. so we are going to see on... one fog blade. Oh, but this doesn't, this is not going to work, right? Because, because it'll. It's continuous, so this C will just make it. Right? Yeah, I think it just it just 
nothing's really happening here. I think yeah. the ABC's actually fine. Now, why did the B fall off? Do I not understand this ruling? Did I did I miss something here? Why did the B fall off? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, because it was equipped to C. Because it was equipped to C. Is that what he's saying? Oh well, Clinch is asking the question anyway, yeah. so we can just pretend that we are really smart. And I go, think ah, he's going to. I think he was equipped to C. Now, the, the problem mm -hmm. is this fog blade is actually useless because now mm -hmm. it's unaffected anyway. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're one hundred percent right. So B because it's no longer or C because it's no longer a monster. B just went to graveyard, um, and B's the searcher, isn't it? So he's just gonna banish this, and, and this can't be fog bladed. It's because C mm -hmm. makes it unaffected by traps. It doesn't matter what he fog blades here. Ah, yeah, he's fallen into really trap. He well says it's still negated. Yeah, because C is just makes it unaffected. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah, C makes it unaffected by traps. Yeah, exactly. So because um, Fogblade isn't something like Imperm, which negates and mm -hmm. resolves, um, and it's just a continuous trap, the C just says, nah, don't care, mate. Actually, it's because Fogblade is a continuous effect that C is able to negate it. If it was like Imperm, yeah. it wouldn't work. But in this instance, C just makes it unaffected. Yeah, they're probably going to have to call it. They might call a judge here. Um, mm -hmm. But... But yeah, this this should make it unaffected, um, mm -hmm. and this is like really powerful. Yeah, he got the C equipped to the Buster. Um, it's really cool when like the equipping stuff works because that that's like unions how they were designed to be, right? Like mm -hmm. equipping, detaching, like so you know summoning back and forth. It really like gives that union yeah. fantasy. I feel like. And an additional layer of protection at the kind of we haven't mentioned as well as um. I'm certain all the pieces that they can substitute themselves for destruction as well. Battlocker, yep. So um, if in the event where, you know, the clinch tries to beat over the ABC or kind of, yeah, it really has to be beaten over. Because um, if he tries to target it, it'll just tag out. You know, it, it, that doesn't work either. So it's a really, really powerful ABC we've got here, backed up by the goddess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the thing I we're think just they're a probably... Little, yeah, a little judge just, call. Yeah. Um, well, but I yeah, this is a. Sorry, on you go. I keep talking uh, over you. No, no, it's okay. Sorry, that's my fault. I'm, okay, I'm just checking to make sure. Yeah, they've got um people. We've got a judge in the room, so um. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna sort of answer that for them, hopefully there, and we can get this resolved soon. Um, what about follow for next turn? Do you think the? I mean, obviously you have Dash or Celestial. What are you really trying to draw here that could like get you back into this game? They need one of their powerful normal summons. Um, we do still have Cherubini on field. I don't see Cherubini lasting particularly long, but I think they need one of their their powerful normal summons. Um, but realistically, I think pretty much anything that PK has will lose to ABC on this crackback because. PK need bodies on board to really start their plays. If they can't keep those bodies on board to be able to fill up their graveyard, then it it, it really slows down their momentum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so, so it looks like really, we resolved it. I think it. like what we need is we ditched another fog blade too, that's big. I think what we really need is like droplets. Um or we need a normal summon, then we need droplets off the top from Celestial and Dasher. And then mm -hmm. we need something to discard with the, the droplets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it looks like in the meantime, we're actually seeing double Dragon Buster. Uh, which is... I, don't, I haven't seen that in a while, but that's pretty cool. Um, he's mm -hmm. going to use the Fog Blade to protect the Cherubini. I like that. It makes sense. It's, you might as well have it in the grave. But honestly... Yeah, I think that's exactly game. Yeah, is this exactly game? That's 25 again. You can try to protect with his back row, but I... Yeah, that's what? exactly what a really good game. That's um, exactly game, right? Yep. Yeah. Ex oh. What a really good game too. That was that had a lot of really good plays in it. Yeah, that had a lot of really really good plays. Um, okay, so ABC wins game two, uh, and I think this this game three is going to be really interesting. Um, 
you know, I think when two good players go into a game free, which I think Clinch and The Witness both showed they've got some really good plays under their belt, that this this is when it gets really exciting, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, they've definitely shown some good plays. Uh... I'm just going to have a quick check. So I've checked out The Witness's side deck. There is definitely some PK hate in there, especially if they're going second. Um, got a really interesting extra deck as well, actually, now that I take a proper look at it. I'm just going to have a quick look at the clinches. Yeah, so what are we expecting to see here? Obviously, clinch has decided to go first. So this is going to lead to an interesting sort of series of events here. Um, mm -hmm. You know. So... Rota again. Similar to game. Really, got an interesting side deck. I don't know if they have much that particularly counters ABC, though. Yeah, like Lancia is pretty good. Ghost Ogre is good against ABC because it kills Union Hanger, which is, you know, ah. important. Well, he's opened the FTK. Tour Guide Kagemusha is, yeah. is a pretty insane start to your turn. Yeah, this is like the best start. Um... But not, maybe not completely out of the woods here. Like, for mm -hmm. example, this is usually close to the fifth summon. Although mm -hmm. you, you just, what, this is already five, right? This is five. And now they've, they're in a position where even if they're Nibiru, they've still got the Cherubini. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think Cherubini hasn't sent anything. Um, usually they would maybe go for like the scales, which could still be good, or they might just go for another graveyard-based extender. Like um, they could go Appaloosa, and then Cherubini could send. Oh well, they're going to send Ragged Gloves. So I'll see what they're doing here. Hmm. Okay. okay. It's it's an interesting choice. I don't know if it'd be the one that I would go for. Um, personally, I I would go for like a a boots here. But they do have the additional extender, so I'm just going to shut up anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's just let, let the... Con I mean, this is a lot of extenders. This is like extender, two extenders already here. Um... Mm -hmm. But this def most definitely sets up Appaloosa pre Bardish, which is huge insurance for the deck. Yep, so here, yeah, exactly like you said. This is going to be an Appaloosa. Um, so maybe um, the Witness opened Imperm Naboo. That would be like the counter. That would be huge, yeah. Um, because yeah, like you, I could see like a world where you maybe even well, you probably can't. You you wanna? He's thinking here. He's thinking. So does he imperm this? This even just an imperm on this is not bad. I think imperm on Rusty is is definitely if he's got it, it's a good call. Um, does have the gloves in the graveyard, but I feel I feel like gloves is only good when it helps something else. Right. Exactly. So this oh, he lets it go. Okay. Okay. So I think this could... So it's going to set the fog blade. that's fine. Probably send, like, the scales or something. Yeah, scales makes a lot of sense because it could revive itself because of the... because of the gloves. Mm -hmm. Yep, so yeah. there's the so, scales. There's just... And that itself makes, you know, puts two bodies on board. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so... I have a mistake. No, that's fine. Yep. We're all fine here. Banish this to send. Now here comes the trigger, right? For yeah, Ancient cloak. Oh, okay, so he's going to let the cloak resolve, which is going to grab him the boots. Yep. So this is an extra two bodies. Um, with either because Torn Scale hasn't done it much today, but it can also send the traps. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we could have more extension under our belt here. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's see what we. What we got here are we gonna see the um boots being special we are um that's really nice yep gonna go for a rank three again i wonder so we're gonna go for the levier which i think you as you said earlier on is, is a really good call yeah this this has better follow-up um mm -hmm. it's interesting because he could have went for the thing the the optimal giving 800 attack very nice um Is this going to... Okay, so, oh, so he's going... Going to go for DPE Acta. Scythe, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Oh, and He's got the fuse, yep. Sometimes you're just that cracked. That, but this is insane. Yeah, you know, this is the optimal board. Cracked hand right there. That was... 
That was Tour Guide with Kagemusha, plus a third extender, plus Fusion Destiny. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Plus, it also sets up the double fog blade because um, Silent Boots, is, of course, that's been sent to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what do you want? You want like an evenly matched here, I think. If you're uh, if you're the witness, like, uh, well, evenly <laughs> matched doesn't even stop this DP scythe madness. So I think the did he use torn skills effect? He no, he didn't because he didn't go into a dark exes. Yeah, so that's all fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is he might be waiting as well. Um, until he commits a monster to the board for the DPE. Yeah, this is going to be a tough sell here for the Witness. It's going to be really mm -hmm. tough to break this board, I think. Yeah, and I'm looking at the, the side deck. It's a, it's a toughie. Um... There's definitely things that would come in handy here, but I don't think it's as tailored to PK as as other side decks could have been. So he's got the the imperm for the Appaloosa. I wonder what that tells us if it if it tells us anything. Yeah, because it's definitely interesting. Because like I would have thought there would be an imperm on the Rusty if he had it in his hand last turn. Mm -hmm. Um, but he saved it for the Appaloosa. So maybe he top decked it. I wonder what he's searching for here. I'm trying to think. Is he searching for, like... Digging really deep this time. Yeah, We've seen him banish three. It's going six this time here. It's, six. it's going for the six. So I'm not exactly sure. He's, he's looking for some interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe he's confident that he's got a side card that kind of wins the game here. Yeah, Bailey's saying Mystic Mind. I just promise, like... Then yeah, I would have probably impermed DPE, I feel like, because that's the only thing that outs Mystic Mine on this board at the mm -hmm. moment. Okay, so thinking here. I this mean, is, if you have an Ash really as well, this is, this is what you would Ash. Mm -hmm. So he's going to let that resolve. Let's see what we're, what we're grabbing off the top. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like that Gamma would have come in real handy earlier, because um, he could have forced the DPE. Yeah. And then Gamma'd the safe. Hmm. Because the nibs are probably not doing too much. So he's going to take B. the B, which kind of makes sense, because, you know, um, Clinch can just wait till he commits anything to the board, so the Imperm would be pretty useless. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this that's, is... and I think this is the power of PK. If if you're not prepared for it, um, or you don't see the right cards, because I can definitely see that Clinch is, you know, Clinch has got a a main deck that can hit ABC really hard. Er, sorry, not ABC PK really hard. But if you don't see those cards, or if you've not built with it in mind, it's it's such an insane end board. Oh, mm -hmm. but maybe we have an evenly here. Declared the battle phase here. Is he trying to force out this? I think he might be. This could be a bluff as well, mm -hmm. right? He could say, okay, I, I have an Imperm in my hand. I need you to use this DPE on this scythe, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's like, a, it's a, I think it's a bluff here. Um, you know, if, if this is a bluff, it's an insane bluff. Yeah, because he might have an Imperm. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, if he does have the evenly, let's, okay, so let's, let's try to look at both cases here. If he evenlies... You can still go for the scythe play. Right, you pop your thing. You pop Has, your... Um, you pop your scythe no, with DPE. Banish everything except whatever you want to keep. Maybe Rusty or a Fog Blade. Mm -hmm. I think you say okay here, because you're still ending with scythe plus a card, right? Yeah, I think you say okay here. Yeah. In a yeah, battle, he's, and... Yeah, he's going to try to go to the end step of battle phase. When he, when he revealed off yeah. of Prosperity, did we see one or two... Oh, he just... Yeah, it was a bluff. didn't take off. It was a bluff. It was a bluff. It was worth going... It was worth a shot, I think. Um, 
but yeah, it was definitely, you know, it makes sense because he probably had another Imperm in his hand. He needed him to go with the Scythe play uh, to even have a chance, I think. But I think well played by Clinch, the... not, to, uh -huh. not to fall for a bluff there. Yeah, no, it was definitely, it was a really well played game by, by both players, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, what, what was in that hand going second? Yeah, should we take a look at the replay real quick? Because it's definitely, it's definitely interesting. I, I'm curious. Let's, we'll just fast forward to the last game here. Um, next game. Wow, that's a, that's a really good hand, but it did open up the Imperm. Yeah, I mean, it definitely might have been worth it to Imperm that Rusty there. I don't know how much that stops. He had the Gamma as well. So he was trying to... Oh, I see. He was trying to... Um, to maybe get him on his opponent's turn. But his opponent just never really activated anything. Um, interesting. Wait, sorry, I'm an idiot. I actually completely missed... <laughs> I clicked not enough times. Um, oh, wow, yeah. So the hand was Prosperity, A, Imperm, Desires, and Gamma. Wow, yeah. I, I think, yeah, it's definitely like a greedy drop. He was going for like the greedy option where he just like beats his opponent, but I, yeah, this is hard to, mm -hmm. it's hard to I say. Think maybe, yeah, it, maybe he was kind of banking on him needing Verti to get the, the fusion destiny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, maybe. So he, he was waiting to imperm the Verti. But I, I really do feel like PK should, should have absolutely crumbled to, to this hand. I mean, he did open pretty well. It would have been a crumble. He still had, like, the, the, the fusion destiny. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, so there was still that. Um, definitely, you know, definitely plays, but that was a really powerful board that I don't really think had to happen. Um, you know, there was definitely ways to stop that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. I mean, yeah, I think it was a, if I could have clinch misplayed a little, then I think holding back the hand traps was probably, like, it would have worked out really well. Mm -hmm. um but i think clinch played it pretty well there so okay that is gonna be it for round five guys everyone should say bye to tally thank you for coming on tally um yeah thank you for yeah no on. thank you so much for having me um okay i really wish i could stick around but i do hear that we have the amazing fantastic incredible bear x bear coming on um and i'm sure he'll do an insanely good job so i'm happy to pass the torch on uh, Yushan, thank you for having me on, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your tournament. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, that is going to be it for round five, everyone. Stick around, because round six is coming right up.